Hey guys, I am so excited to be live with all of you right now. It's been an incredible, incredible day. And, and yeah, we're here for challenge three already. I'm just trying to make sure where you think I'm looking when I'm looking straight at you. So I'm looking straight at myself right now, but I think you're not seeing that. If I look there, does that look like I'm looking straight? I hope that works. Uh, but it is phenomenal to have all of you live right now here with me. Let's see who is tuning in. Let's have a look. So when I'm looking away from my screen, guys, I'm not looking away because I'm distracted. I've got my notes. I do a lot of research for these sessions. I do a lot of insight spotting. I try and find the latest ideas from old books that I've read, from new books that I've read, and I try and put it together. So I always have my laptop here with tons of research on it that I can share with you in these sessions to make them more relevant, to make them more practical, to make them more insightful. And some of you get a sneak peek. I hope you're opening up the emails. Every day, whether you've joined the live or you haven't, we send you a summary email with my notes, my resets that I'm sharing in these sessions. Of course, in the sessions, you get a lot of flow knowledge. You get a lot of insights straight from my mind that I never wrote down, that I never researched, which is the best bit about being in these sessions. The most powerful thing about these sessions and continuing on from these sessions is that you're getting value that necessarily isn't just in a book. You're getting value that isn't just written on some website. It's me really processing, crafting, and sculpting that and being able to share it with you. So if you think I'm looking away, I'm not distracted, I promise you. I'm right here to serve. I'm right here to make a difference. I want to say hello. If you want to shout out, let me know. Stephen, wonderful to see you. Mayra, Nancy, Uma, Harsha, Sahani, Daniela, Gayatri, Golden Spirit, Claudia, hello from California. Emily, always wonderful to see you. Ramni, Mihe, Nikhil, Bridget, great to see you again. Rosie from Texas, Lee, Brandy, great to see you. Mm. Tobias, great to see you. Sasso, Krista, Chami, Umanga, Savi, Lena, great to see all of you. Jennifer, good morning from Flint, Michigan, Michigan. great to see you. I'm glad you needed this in your life right now. I need all of you in my life right now. Tina, so excited for today. How many of you have joined for the first time today? If this is your first time of joining, let me know. I want to welcome you to the group. Guys, go tell everyone that I'm live right now. Let's get everyone flowing. Brilliant to see so many on, on day three. Now, tell me, tell me, what challenge did you try from day two of energy? Which have you already started to put into practice? This one will take a bit more time. But which one have you already started to put in to practice? How many of you are on your first live? How many of you, which challenge did you? That's the first thing I want to ask you. What have you put on from challenge one and challenge two already? Ideally, tell me from challenge two because we talked about challenge one before. Rosie says, can't wait for today's challenge. Charlene says, thanks a lot for the last two days. Very excited for today's learning. Karen says, hi Jay, I've got my sons following you on Instagram. Thanks for your inspiring messages. Karen, I'd love to know what they think. How old are they? Leah, hello, so excited for these workshops and life tips. I'm so appreciative. Leah, I'm so grateful you're here. Christina, I'm so happy to see so many on. So excited to make it live today. Christina, great to see you. Janet, oh my God, can't believe I'm not using my phone for an hour before bed and an hour after walking. Oh my love, amazing Janet, that's so great to hear. Eagerly waiting for this third day event, says Ankita. Priya, hello to you. Sarah. Nancy says, woke up early, breakfast, no phone. Now, Jay, life is great. Nancy, I love that. Wait, I need to take a picture of that. That's awesome. Let me just find that. Nancy, great comment. There we go. Awesome. Great. Senthi, got up at 4 a.m. Thanks, Jay, and drank three liters of water today. Wow, that's insane. I love this, Lindella. Not using my phone one hour before bed. It was difficult, but I did it. Amazing. Sheila, I choose positive energy and not feeding into the negative energy. Amazing, guys. This is phenomenal. It's great to have 2,000 of you online right now. If you're watching this on the replay, a huge, huge shout out. The important thing is, even if you're watching this on the replay, 
even if you think there's too much happening in the group. The reason for this is you can dip in and dip out whenever you like. There is information here ready to uplift you, ready to give you energy, ready to give you insights and help you grow, right? It's right here for you. And therefore, if you're feeling like there's too much going on, you don't have to be a part of all of it. You just dip in and out and grow. And the great thing is the replay, you actually get to press pause on me. You get to reflect for a moment. You get to take that time, make some more notes. I'm loving the notes, by the way, guys. The notes are incredible. Keep them coming in the group. Share them on your Instagram story. Share them outside with the world so that the world knows what we're doing here today. And I want to give a huge shout out to the ambassadors that are working behind the scenes that have now helped. And you know who you are. And this is a shout out for you. The ambassadors have helped us have 150,000 people in this group, 150,000 people. It's absolutely insane. Karen O'Brien, wonderful to see you here. I got up three hours earlier than I usually do on a Sunday and was so energized after I got going. Karen, that's insane. Lisa, texting from my phone in Florida. I hope you're all having an awesome day. Lisa, wonderful to see you here. Okay, awesome. So let's kick off with today's session. As people start coming in online, you can keep commenting what you learned for session two. Deborah says, we both turned down phone one hour before bed. We're getting an alarm click to keep phones out the room. I love that. Arlette says, hi Jay, looking forward to another inspiring session. Spent the morning with positive, inspiring mentor. What a great decision. Rebecca says, hey Jay, I've started waking up half hour early for the last two days. Started focusing on my diet. Can't wait for today's session. Amazing. I'm loving seeing real change. So, today's session is all about emotional intelligence, right? EQ, otherwise known as EQ, emotional intelligence. Our ability to connect with people, understanding their emotions, understanding our emotions with an awareness of the surroundings and an environment, emotional intelligence, the ability to communicate effectively, the ability to understand what someone's going through, through physical cues, through visual cues, through bo uh, body cues, not even without them having to say it. Emotional intelligence is such a key success habit that anyone who requires negotiation, persuasion, motivation, inspiration in their jobs, in your roles, in your personal life. How many of you need to persuade someone in your personal and professional life? Persuasion being an important skill. That's emotional intelligence. How many of you feel in your personal and professional life you need to motivate people? You need to inspire people? That's emotional intelligence. How many of you in your personal and professional life need to negotiate with people? Need to have tough conversations with people? That requires emotional intelligence. All of these scenarios require emotional intelligence. And the most interesting thing about all of this is that the most successful people in the world, healthy, wealthy, or wise, I'm taking this from the research done of the most successful people in the planet, the most healthy people, the most wealthy people, and the wisest people. And they all quote emotional intelligence as being a key metric of success habits, of being a key factor and pillar of growing their success. Why? Because no matter whether you're dealing with projects or dealing with places, ultimately, you're dealing with people. Ultimately, you're not dealing with people. You're feeling with people, right? Projects and places, you deal with them. People, you feel with them. There is a big difference, guys. You know what I mean. Projects and places. I'll give you an example. There's this beautiful story and I get to tell it about one of my mentors. So it was one of my mentors' birthdays around, well, you have a birthday every year, but this was a birthday that I attended of his around eight years ago. And on his birthday, a few of his friends were giving speeches, people who knew him really well and, and appreciating him and recognizing his value, which is such a beautiful quality, right? Such a beautiful quality to have the opportunity to appreciate and respect and show honor to those that have made a difference in our lives. I highly recommend it if you don't already do it. To really focus on specific gratitude, people who've made specific 
changes, right? So, let me talk about this. So he was giving a speech on our mentor's birthday. We, we both study under the same mentor. And he's talked about how our mentor had everyone coming to him, rich people, people who didn't have a lot, people who were successful, people who weren't successful, young people, old people, people from professional careers, people from politics, people from charity organizations. And all of these people, when they walked in to see our mentor, they'd walk in with pain. They'd walk in with struggle. They'd walk in with personal issues. But when they'd walk out, they'd be happy. They'd be elated. They'd know the solution. They'd know the direction they need to walk in. They knew and felt completely rejuvenated from meeting our mentor. And when this man had spent time with our mentor, he was sharing that he saw this. And once in a private conversation, which he was now sharing publicly for the first time, in a private conversation, he'd asked our mentor, how is it that every time someone comes to see you, no matter what problem that they have, no matter what issue they're going through, no matter what challenge they're facing, they walk in with pain, they leave with a smile. How is that possible? How is it possible that people walk in with pain and leave with a smile? And our mentor in this private conversation, not for the people, in this private conversation with him had said, with places and projects, I have a strategy. When it, com when it comes to places and projects, I have a strategy. When it comes to people, I go with my heart. All right? That is emotional intelligence. The ability to choose to go with our heart. Choosing to deal with projects and places, choosing to feel with people. The world was never B to B, business to business. It's always been H to H, human to human. And with technology and all these great devices that we always have, the rising skill of the hour, the most needed skill of the hour, the most needed skill for the future, for success in personal and professional lives, is emotional intelligence. Because even if you know how to use an iPad, if you don't know how to connect with people through an iPad, the iPad is irrelevant. If you know how to use FaceTime and WhatsApp or whatever app and everyone knows how to use them, but if you don't know how to connect with people through it, it's useless. Virtual reality. You may know how to build the most incredible worlds in virtual reality if you don't know how people interact with the space. Virtual reality is useless, right? So this is the significance. This is the key, key point around the importance of emotional intelligence. Remember, I said in all sessions, I'll talk about why is the success habit important. I'll tell you what it's all about, and then I'll tell you how to live it, right? So right now I'm focusing on the why. Why is emotional intelligence important? Because we live in a digital world. We're understanding emotion through digital technology, through digital cues is going to grow. And no matter how much data you have on someone, we all know that we're not all our profiles. We all know that we're more than our profiles. We all know that we're more than statistics and data hidden behind a dashboard of how often we check our phones. There is so much more to us, right? We agree with that. Guys, I want to see how you're finding this session so far. I'd love to read some of your comments. It would be brilliant to hear what you're thinking. I would absolutely love that. It would be really cool for me to read out how you guys are currently feeling. Just put up the volume in your device, guys. If there's any issues, if you're feeling the volume is low or whatever, just put your volume up. Our volume is absolutely fine. We've just done a check for all of you. So just let me know. How good is that, right? So I want to hear what you think. If I'm sounding a bit soft, turn me up, guys. Uh, the microphone's on. Everything seems to be okay. Okay, let's have a look. Can't wait to learn more about this subject today, says Sonia. Addy, you're here for one of the sessions live. Awesome. Emotional is what makes us human, says Natita. Clara says, good morning, Jay. Thank you for your videos and sessions. I'm making a small changes one day at a time. That's awesome. 
I want to hear what you think about the story I just shared. Tara says, thank you, Jay, for the change you made in our lives. Thank you, Tara. That means a lot to me. That's a great mentor, says Vanessa. Vanessa, it's real. It's a true story. It actually happened about eight years ago. Anastasia says, this, why, this is why we need you, Jay. You're, no, no, you're so kind. Thank you so much. Hedda, if you're struggling to hear me, it's a few people saying that I'm sounding distance. Just turn me up. I'm definitely good for sound. Awesome. Amazing. Emily says, Emily Nelson, thank you for bringing your best energy for us. That's all we can ask for. Thankful to see all these amazing interacting. So grateful for the energy, guys. What are you thinking so far? Are you enjoying this session? Ravi says, Jay, this is excellent stuff. Emotional intelligence is key and often underrated as a lot of people solely focus on academic intelligence. I feel emotional intelligence allows us to connect with our family, friends, work colleagues, volunteer workers, and others on a much deeper level. Anna says, my biggest EQ test today has been getting a former monk to an event when all previous guests have been the same old conventional types. You made me believe. Thank you, Anna. That means a lot to me. Lisa says, feeling with people, not dealing with people. I'm going to use this in my business. I believe in this. Lisa, I'm glad that you're going to use it in your business. That's why I'm sharing this advice. It's not just fluffy, nice advice to just use. It's to use with absolutely anyone. Candy, you're so kind. They love digital data. I always interact with people face to face. Yeah, digital data is great. Don't get me long wrong. Technology is great. We won't be able to connect. My point is that technology doesn't help you connect. If you don't know how to connect with people offline, you won't know how to connect with people online. Because people, whether they're offline or they're online, we all think in exactly the same way. Right? We all think in the exactly the same way. Learn this. If you can't connect with people offline, you won't understand how to connect with people online because people's habits are simply magnified and amplified online. Love that Kelly says, EQ takes an ordinary mundane day and transformed it into a meaningful experience. I completely agree with you. Caitlin Marie says, I absolutely love this. Emotional intelligence is extremely important for adults and teens. Especially these days, we're a digital world and schooling for students. You're all on it, guys. Michelle says, it is amazing how you connect with others on an emotional level. Thank you for your knowledge and skills. Michelle, that's so thank so grateful for that. Awesome. He was saying, Exc Akash Rupareli is excited. Brilliant. So emotional intelligence isn't emotionally reaching out to people, right? It isn't about just giving yourself. It's about knowing how to communicate, how to connect, and how to build a collaboration with people. I'll explain what I mean by that. How many times have you ever been around someone and you're like, don't they understand that everyone kind of wants them to be quiet for a moment? How many times have you said that? That person has got so much energy, they're so loud, their personality is so big, but they're not realizing that people around them are kind of switching off and laying back and just want a bit of peace and quiet. How many times have you ever had it in a conversation where you look at the person and go, how did you just say that? Like, did you actually just say that? They think it's absolutely normal. The person there seems offended and you're wondering, wow. Whenever you've felt that way, whenever you've been able to notice in a situation, in an environment, that something doesn't feel right, something's not going right, that's emotional intelligence. But I'm going to break it down even deeper. So I'm going to focus on something today called the DISC model. I've taught this before to help you figure out your personality. But I've never shared it in light of emotional intelligence. So I'm gonna ask you to answer two questions. You may remember what I said to you before in the first session. I already know this. If you're ahead saying this right now, do not go with it because it's gonna be the foundation on which I explain the rest of the session. So even if you've heard me talking about the DISC model before, I'm going to talk about it in a way that you've never heard me talk about it before. Right? This is fresh, new information and insight. This is fresh, new knowledge. Right? So, here we go. What I want you to do is answer these two questions. The first question I want you to answer is, are you more outgoing or are you more reserved? And I'll give you an explanation. You may say, well, I'm both of them. Well, you're not. Because you have a preference at the core. The deeper you know yourself, the easier it is to answer that question. Right? Are you more 
outgoing or are you more reserved? I want to know guys, are you more outgoing or are you more reserved? I'll explain what I mean by that. If you're outgoing, right? If you're outgoing, you're someone who's the life of the party. You're dragging everyone out. You're in the center directing the conversation. That's what it means to be outgoing. If you're more reserved, you're part of the conversation. You hang back, you listen in. Which one are you? Make a choice, outgoing or reserved. Make a choice and write down your word, right? Outgoing people, life of the party, lots of energy, pulling people outside, getting people to do stuff, reserved people, watching. Each is a strength, neither is a weakness. Recognize this, neither of those are a weakness, they're both a strength, right? They're both a strength. It's not that being reserved is less confident. Both are confident. Write down outgoing or reserved in the comments, but also write it down in your own, right? And it's about what you are, not what you'd prefer to be. It's what you are at the core when you strip everything away, right? So choose one. We are definitely percentages, but we are one more than the other. We are always percentages. We're always splits, but we're one more than the other, right? Catherine, that's a very common skill of introverts, actually. So I'm one too. I, I'm very reserved. But when it comes to being on stage or doing a session like this, I'm, I'm in flow. So, awesome. Cece, I know it's hard, but think about which one you would, would you turn to when the time comes. Like when you're in an environment, which one do you res, uh, resort to? Header, I'm much more reserved, even if I'm able to put an outgoing mask when I have air. Yeah, interesting, interesting. I'm more reserved, says Margarita. Shoba, I'm sometimes the life of the party. Wendy, you're an inspiration. I'm outgoing. Thank you, Wendy. That's so kind of you. Awesome. I'm doing these sessions, everyone, because I want you to be successful in your own lives. Have that. See, we are such magnifiers of energy. Whatever's inside has to come out. When you squeeze an orange, what comes out? orange juice that's authenticity when you squeeze a lemon what comes out lemon juice that's authenticity when you squeeze a lime what comes out lime juice that's authenticity if you think you're an orange on the outside but when you're squeezed poison comes out when you're squeezed I don't know alcohol comes out. something that is actually negative comes out then that's inauthentic <coughs> Excuse me, when we focus on success habits, I'm doing it because I want the world, I want all of you to magnify this and have a domino effect that cascades across everyone you know. Second question, and it's not about the company you keep near us, this is about you, it's what you are at the core. Second question, and I want you to write that Are you more people orientated or task orientated. Remember, neither is a weakness, neither is worse, or neither is stronger, neither is confident and unconfident. They're both the same. Are you more ta people orientated or task orientated? People orientated people right now would be thinking, is everyone having a good time? Is Jay connecting with people? Are people motivated? Are people engaged? A task orientated person's going, okay, we've got about 40 minutes left. Uh, there's been about a thousand comments. There's about 3,000, they're focused on the task. Now, each has their strength, but which one are you naturally? Not what your job has made you, not what society has made you, not what the people around you have made you. Guys, I'm loving the energy flying, all these hearts flying through the screen. Thank you so much. Keep the likes and the loves coming. I also love the shocked faces though. I love those because it makes me feel like I've just said something that really just, really just resonated and, and uh, landed. So. Answer this second question, people oriented or task oriented? So write down which one you are. So you should now either have outgoing and task, outgoing and people, reserved and task, reserved and people. You should have one of those four, right? You should have one of those four. Guys, you don't just have to press the button because I asked for it. I was joking. I just enjoy it when it's a real point. I love it. Uh, <clears throat> Brian Gates, great to see you at a live session. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're really enjoying these live sessions. So people orientated. You're worrying about people most of the time. You're thinking about how people feel. But a task oriented person is focusing on the task at hand. Both are significant. Both are important. Which one are you naturally? How many of you are more planners 
and organizers, then you are motivators and inspirers. You'll find that wedding planners are task oriented. You'll find that project manager, managers are task oriented, right? Good. So now you should have one of the four breakdowns. You're either outgoing and task, right? I want to see you say, yes, Jay, I'm an outgoing and task, or you're outgoing and people, or you're reserved and task, or reserved and people. Those are the four splits, the four options that you will have. Make sure you know which one you are because I'm going to explain something very, very significant. Even if you've heard me explain this before, I'm now talking about it through the lens of emotional intelligence, right? Emotional intelligence. When a motivator, when a visionary, when a CEO wants to motivate, their audience, they have to have emotional intelligence. When you want to motivate your team, you have to have emotional intelligence. So, here we go. Task and people. When it comes to, when it comes to going out, like for example, a night out, the task-oriented person is thinking about the order in which it's going to be done. The people-oriented person is just thinking about people having a good time. When it comes to performing a, let's say you're, uh, let's say you wake up in the morning. Some of you are thinking about who should I meet today? Who do I want to be with today? Some of you are thinking, what do I need to get done today? But which one do you naturally feel when it comes to the weekend, for example, not your work day, right? Awesome. So I'm going to break it down in terms of emotional intelligence. So if you're outgoing and task, say yes in your head, say yes in the comments, that's a D. Those people's are directors. You're demanding, you're doers, you get stuff done. These people are planners, they're organizers, right? That's what Ds do, outgoing and task, right? These people are ready, fire, aim. They're ready, they shoot, and then they aim because they want to get going, they want to do something big, right? Then you have outgoing and people. These people are inspirers, insightful, ideators, innovators. These people are ready, talk, 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 talk. I'm joking. They also do stuff. But they like to discuss. They like to intellectualize. These are I's, right? I, as in the letter I. Then we have reserved and people. These people are soft, stable, supportive, empathetic, structured. They're great mediators. They're called the S. These guys are ready, hug, 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 right? Great for hugs. And then you finally have the C type, which are calculative, cautious. They focus on the detail. These are the people that send you emails saying that you've got spelling mistakes in your email. That's the C. So you have DISC, D, outgoing and task. I, outgoing and people. S, reserved and people. C, reserved and task. Now, those are the four key personality types. Everyone in the world will ultimately slot in to one of those when you want to generalize and understand. Now, emotional intelligence is beyond boxes, but these breakdowns allow us to connect, communicate, collaborate with people with greater insight. And I'll explain what I mean. I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm married to working with a D type outgoing and task. These people are motivated by action. They want to get stuff done. They want to start doing. They want to start moving. If you're working with them, you have to focus on plans of action. If you're working with them, you have to show and talk about what you're doing. If you're working with them, you have to show results. They are result oriented. So notice that is the emotional intelligence. When you know someone is of a D-type personality, you understand how to engage with them effectively. Otherwise, we talk to everyone as if they were exactly the same. And more often than not, we talk to people like we talk to ourselves. We think that because we need something that everyone needs the same thing. Don't treat people how you like to be treated. Treat people how they're personality type actually needs to be treated. A D type won't be motivated by lots of detail. They'll be motivated by the big picture results and where you're going. Does that make sense? Does that resonate? 
Let me know if you're, I just want you to take this in for a moment. Right? I want you to take this in. Karen says, Karen, just think about it a bit more. It's all self-awareness. If you're not really feeling like you can break yourself down, it's because we need more self-awareness. Adelita says, I've heard of this before. This is awesome. I'm glad you're digging into it. Adelita, I'm glad you're, you've heard of it before, but I'm glad you're diving into it as well. So I'm digging, you're diving. That's the best combination. Awesome. You're not all of these, Sylvia. It's self-awareness. Go deeper. Are you outgoing and tasked? Which one are you? Really dig deep. You need to do a bit more digging. Disc, yeah, D is outgoing and tasked. I is outgoing and people. S is reserved and people. C is reserved and tasked. <laughs> Brandy Hobbs, I'm a C. Seriously, I've pointed out more spelling mistakes than I can count. I love that. Yes, Angel is asking a great question. Jay, can you be an I type in your life but in a career a D? Correct. And what you really are is an I. Anastasia Fox says, wow, you so open my eyes. I feel as a baby now. They're awesome. Derek says, what a bombshell. Wow, treat people how their personality needs to be treated. It's true. Because what we do is we talk to people like they're us, but they're not. So I'll give an example. If you go to an I-type who is outgoing in people, inspiring, ideas, innovator, they need space to create. If you go up to them and say, you've got to get this to me by 2 p.m. today and get it done fast. If you say that to an I-type, they won't get it done. They won't be inspired. They won't feel like you value their creativity. But if you say that to a D, they get it done. If you said to a D, get this done by 2 p.m., I want it on my desk, bang, they'll have it done. If you said it to an I-type, Mm -mm. they wouldn't get it done because they need to feel inspired. If you said it to a C type like that, they'd say, oh, but where's the detail? They'd want a detailed plan. They'd want a detailed outline. A C type will demand a detailed outline, a focus, stage, steps, progression. And an S type will ask, I, I can get it done, but I'm not sure that the team's gonna feel okay about it. See, the S type, because they're more people oriented, bring that in to the picture. They think, oh, but I'm not sure the team's gonna be okay with this. Notice how the thinking changes. Notice the subtleties of the emotional intelligence. Often we speak to everyone as, this, as if they were exactly the same. We test everyone as if they were exactly the same. The truth is we're all so different, right? We're all so different. Reading out some of your comments now. Matt Duran, love this different way of explaining disc profiling. Yes, push the group to dig deeper. Thanks, Matt. Samantha, yes, this makes sense. I divided, but I think I'm, I'm more actually awesome. Thomas, great to have you here, man. I'm an S-type, but know a lot of D-type people. This is an amazing way to understand those people in my life, says Laura. Amazing. Exactly. D Laura, I'm going to expand on what you just said. This also shows us how people are not bad or good, but people are seeing things from a different lens. There's a beautiful story in the Vedas that I love. There's books that I studied as a monk. And the example is given of six blind men. And these six blind men walk inside the backstage of a circus. And they walk into the backstage of a circus, they're feeling their way around and they touch, which is an animal. And they're told that that animal, they've come to this tour, they're told that this animal is an elephant. And they're asked, what is the elephant like? One of them says, the elephant is like a tree trunk. That's because he was holding on to the leg of the elephant. The other blind man says, oh no, the elephant is more like, um, the, the elephant is more like rope because he was holding on to the tail of the elephant. The other man says the elephant is more like a palm leaf because he was holding on to the ears of the elephant. He said, it's like a palm leaf. Another one said, oh, the elephant is more like a bending tree trunk because he was holding on to the, to the trunk of the elephant. Another one says, no, the elephant is like a wall because he was, he was seeing the body of the elephant. All of them were right. They were just seeing it from different perspectives. 
In the same way, when you're a D type, you think of things as results. When you're an I type, you think of ideas. When you're an S type, you think of people. When you're a C type, you think of the detail. None of them are wrong or right. This will help you emotionally, intelligently understand why people are the way they are and people aren't just going to change. I'll give you another example. A few years ago, I'd organized a retreat in India. I need to start doing those again. I help people come and live like a monk for a week. If that sounds like a good idea, say yes. I'd like to know. But I used to take people to India to live like I did as a monk for a week. And when we'd be in India, when we'd be in India, we... So, so for those of you who don't know, I helped build sustainable villages and food distribution programs in India when I was a monk. So we now, I'm, I'm a board member for this charity, we now have a charity that distributes 1.2 million meals per day to the children of India. 1.2 million meals per day to the children of India, all across the country. These kids can't go to school because they can't afford their meals. By us providing their meals, they can now go to school and get an education. It's beautiful, I'd love to take you all there one day. I really would like to take you all there one day. We build these sustainable villages where local villagers with their natural talents can build their own economy and environment. Women who are good at arts and crafts, we teach them how they can sell that so that they can make some money to eat and take care of their family. So much of my life now is dedicated to doing good in the world. And everything I'm doing with all of you is so that I can do good in all areas of the world, right? So why am I talking about this? Thinking like a monk, we... <clears throat> so we'd organized a retreat. And we'd organized a retreat and what we found out is that the day, the next day we wanted to go on a hike and it was going to rain. We saw the weather forecast, it was going to rain. I'll show you how each of the DISC responded. Listen to this carefully. As soon as... Right? Listen to this carefully. As soon as we had the news, the D-type said, no, we've set the date, the plan is there, we will do it as it is. We also have a plan B if something goes wrong, but the task is set, we've got it mapped out. Right? That's what they focused on. And everyone else is getting angry at them because everyone else is thinking in their own way. The I-type's going, oh no, I've got this new idea. Let's completely change the plan, even though we don't have a plan for it, we've come up with this inspiring idea, everyone will have a good time, let's completely change it. Right? The S types are saying, okay, we'll pack sandwiches for everyone, we'll add some games, we'll take umbrellas, we want everyone to feel happy, we'll get, we'll get some chips and crisps and we'll make people, you know, they're focusing on the people. And the C type said, okay, all we need to do is check the weather forecast for exactly that hour that we wanted to hike and let's decide then. Notice how no one was doing anything wrong, but everyone was saying something different. That is emotional intelligence. Understanding why someone's saying that. They're not saying that because they're wrong. They're not saying that because they're stupid. They're not saying that because they don't agree with you. They're saying it because that's how they're wired. We are all wired emotionally, right? Does that make sense? So Daniela, Danielle says, I'm an S married with a D. How can we engage? The way to engage is you have to share and connect with her as a D and she connects with you as an S, right? Does that make sense? Guys, that last point I just made about everyone having different types is huge. Dominique says, yes, Jay, plan a trip to allow us to experience living as a monk. Imagine how the world would change if this was part of every child's education. Beautiful vision, Dominique. Thank you for sharing that. Elizabeth, I really love your energy. Thank you so much. Esme, you are incredible. I love your energy. Thank you so much. Carrie, Sanjana, oh wow, I'm loving all the energy from all of you. Mary says, people in an art class have the task of drawing the apple in the center of the room. When asked to reveal the picture, half showed a perfect beautiful apple, the other half showed a rotten apple. Both groups were right, it was all about perspective. There we go, beautiful. Right? And Samantha uses as an opportunity to go deeper. Right? Notice how no one is wrong, but this is giving you an insight. Now, next time you hear someone's opinion, think about it. Okay, why are they saying that? Are they saying that because they're a D, an I, an S, or a C? And even deeper than that, are they saying that because they've had that experience in the past? Are they saying that because they've had pain in the past? Are they saying that 
so these are the thing these are the things so there are there are three key things that dictate someone's response the first is their disc profile the first reason why we say something wired by something is our wiring right the second reason we say something is we're reflecting our needs dreams and worries we say things we behave in ways because of our disc profile and because of our needs dreams and worries when you hear people recognize that you're hearing their dreams needs and worries you're rarely hearing them you're hearing people's needs dreams and worries what you're doing here is you're not just reading between the lines you're hearing between the lines you're seeing between the lines and therefore reading between the lines emotional intelligence is the ability to spot how to communicate how to connect how to collaborate with people according to their emotional disposition according to their emotional disc according to their needs dreams and worries right so d type people usually conflict with c type people d type people want to get things done and their heads up in the clouds they want to think big and c type people want to focus on the detail and they want to go slower because they want to get it right natural point of conflict let's talk about how to make it better this is emotional intelligence are you with me guys press the like and love button if you're with me i'm loving that energy flying across screen are you getting value from this session right now it seems like you are it seems like you are Tyler hey Jay how does this work with relationship compatibility does one side work better with another so there are natural collaborations that work better with each other but it's all about work and that's what I'm sharing right now right I love that Kim 6 plus 4 equals 10 but so does 7 plus 3 different perspective that's all absolutely Anastasia loving your presence and your positivity Priscilla says you're so right I work a lot with Enneagram this is so much easier to explain Priscilla I love Enneagram I teach it too and I choose not to teach it in big groups because you're right it can get confusing this is simpler I'm glad you liked it Priscilla thank you so much here we go Tracy emotional intelligence by understanding accepting and treating people the way they need to be helps me work well in my work environment with many different personal I therefore create a positive flow around me Tracy sure I love that thank you for sharing it Mona I can also know how to talk and what people need so I advise them in that way exactly Mona this is great mind blown says Anita I want to know more about the different disc profile types we'll dive more into it Anita in follow-up sessions uh, not in this group but but as we move forward so definitely look out for them Isabel has heard the disc profile before but just realized I think so different to one of my colleagues and why she is having so much trouble in the office there we go so live love you can watch this from the beginning when you get your replay sent to you remember all of you if you're watching the replay now that's amazing if you don't you will get it sent in the email to you open your emails they're all being sent to you guys please 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 open your emails so i want to talk to you a bit about the kind of uh challenges so d and c have issues because d things big and wide and c things detail and slow so how do you change that when a D talks to a C, they should provide detail. When a C talks to a D, they should bring in vision. Does that make sense? So usually right now, when a D talks to a C, they're just like, okay, get it done. Just want it done. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. I don't need to see the detail. Let's get on with it. Wrong. A D type needs to say, okay, let me see the detail. Great. Thank you for showing me the detail. Here's the detail plan from my side. When the C talks to D right now, they're just talking about the detail. And the D goes, oh, I'm tired. It's giving me a headache. The C needs to go, oh, and this is how it fits into the bigger vision. Right. I and S get along well. S, S, S generally can get along with most people. S gets along with C, S gets along with I, but S does not always get along with D. D wants to get moving so fast sometimes that people get hurt, and S wants to slow it down. These are obviously extreme examples, right? Now, key point, the ideal company the ideal team, the ideal institution, the ideal family 
will have all of these. If you only had, if you never had D's, you'd never get anything done. If you never had I's, you wouldn't have new ideas. You wouldn't have fresh ideas. If you never had C's, then you'd never get quality and detail. If you never had S, then people would not feel happy. Notice how each of you, with your element, provides so much value. And it's in that element that you provide the most value. A D trying to be an I or an S trying to be a C will never work. You provide the most value in yours. This is a success habit. Knowing yours and knowing how to emotionally connect, inspire, communicate and collaborate with all of the others. Guys, I'm loving all the mind blown faces, right? So S can work with I's and C's. Shama Data, I'm glad you like the session. So really important, Lisa, Lisa says, I cannot wait to watch again and take notes right now, just soaking it in and loving it, amazing. Smooty says, you are so right, Jay. Sometimes we just need to step back instead of judging people. Do not judge people, we are all wired differently. And this will help you to understand why people are wired. Now, when I do a session, I tailor it to D's, I's, S and C. We talk about big things. We go into cool ideas. We focus on the detail and I always love people. So I'm, I'm addressing all of them because all of you are all of them. But when you, that's when you're talking to 3,000 people like I am right now. And, and by the end of the day, 100,000 people. But when you're talking to one person, you just need to understand them. And so how do you know? The way you know is you ask these questions in your head or you do as an activity. Remember, this is not manipulation. This is not a technique to manipulate or get more out of people. This is emotional intelligence so that you can connect and have a deeper, meaningful relationship with people. But don't become a professional pretzel. You're not trying to become all of these things. You're just communicating with them with that language. I'll give you a very simple example. If you're in someone's country, it would be incredible if you could speak to them in their language. Imagine when you're in Germany, you could speak in German. You're in India, you could speak in Hindi. When you're in uh, China, you could speak in Chinese. Imagine you could speak in the native language. That's what this is. It's speaking in the other person's language so that they get the most value, so that you have the highest impact. The problem is we speak in our language to people in a different world. How many times have you ever turned up to a country, try to speak, speak to people in your language, they don't understand it. What happens? Disconnect. What happens? Disharmony, what happens? Disunity, what happens? People go opposite ways. And that's what happens in the workplace, that's what happens in personal and professional lives. We're just speaking different languages. When you speak to someone, speak to them in their language, not yours, if you want to have impact. If you want to be successful, if you want to negotiate, if you want to persuade, if you want to inspire, if you want to motivate, you have to learn how to do this. If you want to be successful, at personal and professional life, you have to do this. You have to know how this works, right? You have to know how this works. You have to know how to put it in to practice, right? If you've not signed up by the email, guys, please do sign up today, right? It's www.jshetty.me forward slash success habits. I want you all to be getting the replays because when you get the replay, you can watch it again. And I, like I said, I'm gonna put this into the comments. I want you to watch the replay. I'd like you to be watching each session at least twice because the first time you just soak it all in and the second time you actually have your notes, your questions, etc. I've just popped it into the comments. I'm gonna try to pin it to the top right now. Let me see if I can do that. It's not letting me pin it to the top right now. I will try and do that. Let's see if it works. Oh, yeah, there we go. I have just pinned... Oh, pinned the wrong comment. <laughs> One second, guys. Just trying to find my comments. There's so many comments flying through. Uh, where is it? Here we go. So I've just pinned my comment with the link. If you're not getting emails, if you want the replays and you need them sent to you, plus I send you my summary notes. So not only do you get the replay, you actually get my notes that I'm sharing this information from and you will get them. So please, please, please make sure you sign up to the email. We've had 
25,000 people join in the last three days since the launch. So we already had about 125,000 people. We've had another 25,000 people join. So if you want to get the updates, the additional notes and surprises, remember I've got some bonuses and surprises coming, make sure you sign up, right? So that you get the emails. Make sure you sign up. Pen Ingram, Petchy says, oh my God, if we could all take on board speaking to people in their own language, just imagine how much more empathy we would have for others and what a better world. Imagine how much we could communicate Imagine how much we could better understand. Barbara says, love it. The language example is great. Totally feel this can really help. You're great, Jay. Love that you're spreading the videos. Well, I'm genuinely so grateful, guys. I'm genuinely so, so grateful to all of you. So when, a, when you talk to an S person, remember that you have to speak to them with an understanding of people. When you speak to I people, you need to think of space and creativity. C, detail, D, plan, results. It will make your life easier. C, yes, Asniv just said, Asniv, is, sorry, is that your name? Yeah, Asniv just said, I wish you would start schools with these teachings. Well, you are in that school right now. We have 150,000 people in this school right now, right? We have 150,000 people in this school right now. We're doing it. And you can be a part of it. You can actually be a part of this. If you value what I'm sharing, if what I'm sharing with you in these sessions, you're noticing the impact, you're seeing the value, stay with me. Stay tuned in, join the rest of the sessions, and I'll show you how this can be a part of your life for the next year and beyond. This can truly, truly change your life. These regular reminders, these regular refocuses, these regular redefines. It's so easy to get caught up in the year and forget all of this. You think you know it in the moment, and then you forget. But I don't want you to forget. Just imagine that I was helping you through the whole year to do this. Just imagine that for a moment, how much things would change. Let me know how, if you think that would have impact. Jennifer Lakey says, I have so much to work on that I didn't even realize until now. Thank you for inciting growth within me. Jennifer Lakey, that is beautiful and very humble and modest. Thank you. Jane McCabe, jumping on late. Don't worry, you haven't missed anything, Jane. You can watch the replay. If you've signed up for the email, then you'll get it sent to you as well and my notes so you haven't missed anything. Roberta says, I am grateful for you and this group. Well, I'm grateful to you as well. Dana says, if you're in a crisis within a company and things need to be done and there's no time to read all the types, any advice will be best approach. Dana, there is always time to read all the types. This will save you time. See, people say, I just want to get the quick solution, but I don't want to do the work. It's in the work that the solution gets quicker. Make sense? Like, it's so easy to be like, I just want to solve the problem. But actually, when you learn knowledge and wisdom and insight, that solves the problem quicker and more sustainably. Jenny Sanjay, long did you work on speaking in front of an audience? Thank you, Jenny. That's very kind of you. I trained as a public speaker from the age of 14. I was very shy until then. And I've been speaking ever since I was 14. So it's been a long, long time. And I used to speak for, when I was a monk, I used to speak to audiences for about three hours a day for three years in a row, seven days a week. So I've done well over my 10,000 hours of, there's, there's two things. There's three things that I've done over 10,000 hours of. Malcolm Gladwell says, if you want to be an expert in anything, if you want to be an authority in anything, if you want to be a teacher in anything, you have to have ideally done 10,000 hours. So public speaking, meditating, and studying wisdom. Uh, studying and experimenting with wisdom. I've done those for 10,000 hours. Camilla Bilstrom says, I'm loving this, soaking it all in. I'm in complete awe of how much sense this makes and how differently I see things from now on. Amazing, Camilla. Thank you so much. Daria says, this is the coolest school ever. It's, very one it's, one it's a very wonderful class. Jeannie says, there's a lot of things on how to communicate with people. We should learn how to listen. Absolutely. Amazing. You'll get my notes. Sign up, guys, for the email. Mabel said, I would be a great teacher when I start to apply this in my class. I've, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Kelly says, I'm feeling grateful that this has become one of the ways I get to recharge every day. I feel overwhelmed with excitement, peace, inspiration, and love. Kelly Sedan Pittman, thank you so much. That means so much to me. I love that. I want to be your recharge. Let me recharge you every single day, everyone. I, that's my role in your life. Amazing. Viraj personally watches each live three times. Amazing. Awesome. These sections are so valuable, says Heather. I'm so glad that you're loving it. So guys, I want you to 
try out one of these as a challenge for today. The challenge is noticing and becoming aware of the different people in your life. Notice the people that you spend the most time with work and outside work. What profile are they? And see if you can interact with them, communicate them with them, connect with them, collaborate with them with this new insight and knowledge that we have found, right? Give it a go, try it out. That's day three. That is day three, right? That is day three. Can't believe it. Day one, day two, day three. These days are flying by. I'm hoping that you're wanting more and more and more of this. Chawi, this is the school you never want to graduate. Oh, wow, I like that. I like that. How do we sum that up quickly? That's awesome. Sorry, I just want to take a picture of that. That's awesome. I love that. Um, awesome. Let me take that picture. I love that. This is a school you don't want to graduate. That's awesome. That is brilliant. Sunita says, J School of Learning has been mind-blowing. Thank you for helping us grow with your energy. Paula, that's exactly the right understanding. Amazing, guys. I am so thankful to each and every one of you. I want to watch once a week until I truly understand it. I want to change myself and others, says Tina. Tina, there'll be ways of showing that. Joey says... Joey, I hope I'm saying your name right. Joey, hi, Jay. You don't know what a difference you've made. We'll forever be grateful. I'm, I'm so touched. Guys, I am genuinely so grateful that you give me this opportunity to sit with you for an hour a day. I'm so grateful for all of your time every day. Please, please, please share your notes in the group. Please encourage other people. I want you, each of you, to connect with three people in the group that you're sharing and learning from about these things all the time. Right? I want you to do that. Go after this and make sure that the people who are missing the live sessions are actually watching the replay, are connecting with the content. See how you can play that role in the group when we all become teachers. We have to be teachers and students at the same time. I'm a teacher, but I'm also a student. I'm always learning and I'm teaching. I want you all also to teach, right? Thank you so much. Irie, I'll never stop teaching as long as you keep joining. Lots of love, guys. Have an amazing day. I'll see you all very soon. Very grateful. See you tomorrow for Challenge 4. See you there.